So at this point, I'm going to introduce four different types of cost analysis that are relevant in education. Cost feasibility analysis, cost effectiveness analysis, cost benefit, and cost utility analysis. And for each of these, I am going to talk about the purpose of the program of the type of analysis. I'm going to talk a little bit about pros and cons, give you an example from the literature, and then provide an example of how you might apply this kind of analysis to professional learning. So the first one is cost feasibility analysis. You might use it to determine whether adequate resources are available to implement or scale up a program. The advantage of this is that you can very quickly identify or rule out choices based on the feasibility of implementation. The disadvantage is that you're only thinking about cost here. You're not considering what's gained from the program. An example from the literature is Brewer, Krupp, Gill, and Reichart, who in 1999 estimated the cost of reducing class size in grades one to three throughout the US. If only they had done that a few years earlier, California might have done things differently. For an application of professional learning, you might want to figure out how many teachers the district could afford to send to a week-long summer institute each year. Next, we're going to move on to cost-effectiveness analysis. The purpose of cost-effectiveness analysis is to compare programs. So it can help you determine which of several programs results in desired effects at the lowest cost. So for example, if you're looking for something that will help you increase performance on reading tests by 10% above and beyond business as usual, you might be looking for a program that will do it um, that's at the least cost. Alternatively, if you know you have a fixed amount to invest, so $1,000 per student, for example, you might be looking for a program that's going to give you the biggest effect on reading comprehension, so the most bang for your buck. In terms of advantages, it can help choose among several alternative programs, and it doesn't just look at cost it looks at the effectiveness of the program as well. A disadvantage is that you can only consider one type of outcome at a time. So you can compare several programs which improve the graduation rate, but you would not be able to compare a program that improves the graduation rate to one that improves kindergarten readiness. An example from the literature is a study that I conducted with a number of my colleagues comparing five dropout prevention programs to see which one was most effective, cost effective at producing high school graduates. I'll show you the results in a second. But an application to professional learning might be to investigate which of three alternative professional learning strategies leads to the greatest improvements in teacher evaluation. So I said I was going to show you the results of that study in which we looked at the cost effectiveness of five dropout prevention programs. If you look at the blue bars on the left, you'll see that we estimated the cost per student served, first of all, and the most expensive program per student served was Job Corps that cost about $22,000 per student, and the least expensive was Talent Search, just over $3,000 per student. I guess I can use this little arrow. Um, on the right-hand side, the purple bars show the cost-effectiveness metric, the cost per extra graduate. Now remember that just because students are served in a dropout prevention program doesn't mean that they don't drop out at some point. So if you're wondering why is it so much more expensive per extra graduate, it's because many of the students dropped out of these programs. And here we're also looking at the cost per graduate above and beyond the ones that would have graduated in the control group anyway. So if 20 people would have graduated in the control group who weren't participating in this program, uh, and then, sorry, I was going to say 20 people graduated from that group and 30 from this group, it's only 10 extra graduates that you're talking about as a result of this particular intervention. So in this case, you can see that new chance was the least cost effective because it cost the most per extra graduate produced. 
and talent search does remain here is the most cost effective. The problem with new chance in this case is that it served new mothers with their children, so there were two people being served, and they're also most at risk of dropping out from the program in the first place. So let's move on to the next type of analysis, <clears throat> which is cost-benefit analysis. The purpose here is to estimate whether the economic benefits of a program exceed the cost. The advantage here is that you can compare programs with different objectives. So you can compare the program that improves the graduation rate with a program that improves kindergarten readiness. Uh, a disadvantage, or more of a challenge, I should say, is that you need to estimate benefits as dollar values and often over a long period of time. That's not so easy to do when you're dealing with young kids because you either have to follow them for many years to see what happens to them, uh, or you have to make projections into the future, which can be pretty tenuous. But some of the more famous examples of cost-benefit example in, <clears throat> in education are the ones on early childhood programs. One of them is Belfield, Norris, Barnett, and Schweinhardt, who did a cost-benefit analysis of the High Scope Perry Preschool program. And they figured that the cost in $2,000 were $15,000 per student. And the net benefits to the general public were $180,000 per student. So that was pretty impressive. There have also been a number of studies reported in the, the RAND 2017 report. It came out just, I think, in December um, on early childhood programs. So you can take a look at that if you're interested in more examples. And then in terms of an application to professional learning, you might be providing <clears throat> an activity to help teachers better support struggling readers and want to know whether the benefits of that exceed the cost. So here you might want to consider the dollar value of putting more students through special education or less students, um, the dollar value of repeating a grade or not, and then what happens to the students in terms of extra earnings if they graduate on time. So the last type of analysis I'm going to talk about is cost utility analysis. And the purpose here is to compare the cost of the program with how well it meets stakeholder needs. The advantage here is that the analysis can accommodate multiple objective and subjective factors in decision making. So an objective factor might be something like effectiveness at improve, improving reading comprehension, and a subjective factor might be how well each program satisfies teacher preferences. It's a great way to engage multiple stakeholders in decision making. It can be used even if there isn't hard evidence of program effectiveness. And it can be used when programs address uh, more than one outcome. For example, the program might improve both reading and math achievement. The disadvantages of cost utility analysis are that the results are only relevant to one particular context. And that's because every set of stakeholders is really going to care about very different things. The other disadvantage is that most practitioners are not familiar with how to calculate utility. Although we just have started a project to create a new tool that will do that automatically. So we might be solving that problem in a year or so. And an example from the literature would be Lewis, Johnson, Erickson, and Brunick in 94, who did a cost utility analysis of special education programs. I'm going to show you the results from that so you know what this actually looks like with numbers. And here you can see that uh, they did the study in Minnesota, and the, the question was which of these three delivery models for special education services would provide the, the best satisfaction to stakeholders um, for the amount of money that they could invest in it. And the three models were um, delivery via an urban independent school district, the other, the second one is uh, delivery by an intermediate school district representing a consortium of districts jointly offering services. And the third one is via a special education cooperative, which is made up of multiple small to medium-sized independent school districts. 
And you can see the cost per student were the highest for the independent school district at 28,000. And the cost for the other two delivery models were within $1,000 of each other. The, in terms of utility or usefulness to the stakeholders, the intermediate school district provided the most utility. So just looking at these straight off the bat, you would probably rule out the independent school district. It costs the most, and it has the lowest utility value, which reflects in the cost utility ratio. It's the most expensive per unit of utility. So let's rule that one out right away. Then the other two, it's a bit of a trade-off here between the $1,000 difference in cost per student and the five units of utility. So if you could afford it, you might choose the intermediate school district. If you couldn't afford the extra $1,000, you go with a special education cooperative. They actually, very strangely, have the same cost utility ratio. And then, how might you apply this to professional learning? It may be the case that you're considering four different professional learning strategies, and your stakeholders, who might be teachers and administrators, have indicated four requirements for these strategies. So one might be that the, the program or strategy fits with the district's current instructional goals. A second might be that it shows evidence of improving classroom practice. A third, that it responds to local teacher preferences. And the last, that it's feasible to implement within available professional learning base. So you basically would have to evaluate each of the four strategies to see how well they meet those four criteria. And the one that does would have the highest utility. You balance that against the cost, and that would inform your decision as to which one to go with. 